Hi there guys and gals. Well, I guess it's happened to you sometime, otherwise you wouldn't be looking at this video. I plugged in my soldering iron the other day, gave it a little test, cold. Five minutes later, still cold. Hmm, that's bad news. So, first thing I did was the obvious thing, check the fuse in the plug, that was okay. Second thing I did was make sure it's unplugged, dismantle it, dead easy, two screws, this one, I've already dismantled it to be honest, that's why they're hanging out, this one, this one, as I said already undone it, and then after making double sure that it's unplugged, you can slide out the element, this is what you see, and I say again, it must be unplugged because you've got three live terminals here, the live brown, green and yellow which is ground, and blue the neutral plus there's a separator to prevent them from ever accidentally contacting each other. Now the next thing I did, by the way this is an Antex X-Ray Sierra 2525 but no doubt a lot of decent soldering irons will be the same. So do that carefully as I say, make sure it's unplugged because as you see we've got live connections here. Next thing I did very carefully was plug the soldering iron in again and then on the AC scale on my test meter and probably be told off by proper electricians for doing this. Next thing I did very carefully was check that I had 240 volts there across the obviously the brown live and the blue neutral. Now as I say that's live so in fact strictly speaking I don't think you should hold test leads this way because you could get a shot right across your heart but I digress do it very carefully but there was 240 volts there which confirmed that it wasn't just the breaking the cable. So what's the next step? Unplug the soldering iron again. Don't forget you could spend 25 26 pounds buying a new one or if it's an Antex or some decent make you can get elements for it for only about 13 14 pounds which is what I've got here. I shall put the part numbers down below but anyway excess 25 watt 230 volt element and as you can see three pins three pins so what's the next step yes you've got to desolder these solder on a new one which is a bit tricky when your soldering iron isn't working because that's why you're doing this luckily enough I've got this beast of a thing a bit crude but with a gentle hand it's good enough to actually desolder these so that's what I'm going to do next obviously with it unplugged and then desolder that, solder in a new one. So before I desolder it, one little thing here, if you take all the wires and pull them down this way, in other words, using that little knob upwards, you can pull that off, which makes it a darn sight easier to do. And if you're really bothered about soldering them back in the wrong place, just desolder one at a time and resolder one at a time dead easy. So check again make sense to tin these first which is what I'm going to do you don't know how to tin it it's a question of just applying a little bit of solder sorry my hands are shaky trying to do this in front of a camera just the question of applying a little bit of solder to the pin before you actually try and connect a wire to it so it's silvered it there do you see that it's quite hard doing this in front of a camera which is why my hands are so shaky so that's tinned and now basically if I just put a blob of solder on the end of this Ideally, you don't want to move a solder joint while it's going off, otherwise you get what's called a cold solder joint. So I'm going to hold it like this, very carefully. There's one on, and I put it on the wrong one. See that deliberate mistake there? Can you see that? I put it on the ground that could have had serious consequences put it on that one don't let it move while it's going put the ground on in the middle where does the ground go 
steady yep oh yep got it and finally just making sure we've got these the right way do a double check finally the neutral So as before, it's a question of slide those down, little knob upwards, bit tricky, come on now, come on don't let me down, bit tricky but that slides back on there, it will do with a bit of helping, yeah that slides back on there, that goes in there like that, like that, like that all back together okay so it's time to reassemble now as you notice there's a screw thread there that's because that has to go back in god why won't it go God, why is it so bloody tight? Ah. And of course, typically, when you're trying to make a video showing how to do something, the part that you thought that was going to be really simple doesn't work. I find it won't go in. Because, I guess these are Chinese copies, and they're not made to quite the same tolerance. That slid out really easily. So, unfortunately, what I'm going to have to do is sand these edges down because it's so tight. I got it and I actually had to use baby mole grip to put it out again. I'm going to have to shimmy those down with a file so that I can actually get this back in. Because, as you can see, even without this dividing clip on there, that is too tight. So I'm going to do that and then I'll come back and show you the reassembly. Please be patient, as I'm trying to be. Don't go away. Right, sorted. In fact, all I did was use a blade just to chip a bit off. So with the last double check to make sure you've got these in the right place, and it does actually say on it, neutral, ground, live. With the last double check, we will reassemble. Hopefully it'll go in this time. Now this came from Amazon. I'll put a link there. But you could buy from somebody like CPC and you'd probably get the genuine article. Now which way does that go? It was knob upwards. Right, got it. You've got to get that in there, that in there like that, that in there like that. Slide that back on. So the holes at the top there, opposite side to the ground. And obviously that's the important bit that's got to go lined up with. It's going to work this time. And that should just slide in like that. And as you can see, there's screw hole one. Don't need to over tighten it. And that is the cable gripping little plastic screw into there. Could have found a smaller screwdriver. But the main thing is see if it works okay so I won't put the tip on yet but I will plug it in see if it starts getting warm in fact if you want to be mega careful with it and I am mega careful with 240 volt electrics I'm actually going to check that with a very simple neon screwdriver to make sure that's not live and as you can see nothing's happening so oh god and that's hot that's hot already so that's working turn it off take the tip off this and when that's cooled down I'm going to slide it back on and as you can see I think there's supposed to be a little oh there is a little circle up there and in fact it will slide on oh yeah okay yay so anyway that's it my soldering iron is alive and well again and I won't be stuck using this great big lump trying to solder little tiny ICs into circuit boards and things anyway hope you found it useful 
if you found the use video useful why not hit like down there and maybe even subscribe and check out some of my other videos it's mostly paragliding paramotoring radio control models drones tech stuffs camera tests all kinds of things to keep you amused but that's it be careful when you're working with 240 volts make sure things are unplugged before you even contemplate taking something apart but that's it for now stay safe hopefully i'll catch you all again soon and don't forget to check out my other videos just up there great bye for now